So you'd say, I know, I know, chem guy. That's NO3. Nitrogen trioxide. Well, it would be if it wasn't for the fact that that says it's a negative one charge. See, that there are groups of non-metals that when they come together, they act as this aggregate kind of a thing, a, a little unit, that can accept electrons or donate electrons. As a matter of fact, only one of them really you have to worry about that donates electrons, and it's this one. That is NH4 with a positive one charge. It looks like ammonia. It's not. It's ammonium. Okay? So that's ammonium ion. It says, I could lose an electron. My whole thing right here can lose an electron. This whole thing here can gain an electron, and it's called not nitrogen trioxide, and not, again, tetra, nitrogen tetrahydride. Ooh, that would be terrible. This is ammonium, and this ion here is called nitrate. Now, where are those? They're not on the periodic table. No, no, no. They're not on the periodic table because that's just dealing with the elements and some diatomic ones, and S is 8 and P is 4, right? But you're always going to get on a periodic table, either on the back side or on the front side. You're going to have a chart that lists a bunch of polyatomic ions. Some teachers make you memorize which, which are which kind of thing. Um, I don't uh, have my students memorize them because they're on a chart. Why would you memorize something that's on a chart? Why can't you just use a chart? Teachers, just let them use the chart. By the time they're finished the course, they're going to know what phosphate is and nitrate is and all of those charges because they're going to use them a thousand times. Don't make them memorize them right away. Let them memorize them. Let the student memorize them as they're doing it. What do you think? Now, NO3 negative is nitrate. So if I said to you, here's a compound I want you to make. It's called sodium nitrate. You look at that and you say, well, that's not nitride. And it's not nitrite. It's nitrate. So it's on a polyatomic chart. Ites are on the chart. Ides are just normal elements. So here, sodium nitrate. Na is a positive. Nitrate is NO3 negative. When you make a compound, positive one, negative one. Now you're going to say, well, there's three of these. No, look, that's not a three negative or anything like that. What you have to do is just break it down for yourself and say this. This whole thing, this nitrate, is a one negative charge. That whole thing is a one negative charge. Just treat it like it was you know, like a CL with a one negative charge. That's not a problem. Just treat it as one unit. This is Na with a positive one, NO3 with a negative one, NaNO3. Now, if I said to you, ah, but instead, I don't want sodium nitrate, I want calcium nitrate. Okay, now, Ca is a two positive charge. Nitrate is a negative one charge. So what's the formula? Well, you need, and most you're clever enough, you understand, that's two positive. I want to lose two electrons, but I only want to gain one. So we need two of these to gain one electron each when this loses the two electrons. So what do you get? You get one Ca, but how do you say two NO3s? You go NO3 and you put a two, and that looks like you got N, one N and 32 O's, and that just looks wrong. Okay, so what you do is you put brackets around the polyatomic ion to say, I need two of those whole things. And you only put brackets around a polyatomic ion when you have a number outside that is more than one. Yeah, but Kim, guy, couldn't you just, if you needed just one, couldn't you just put brackets anyway, just put a one or just leave it alone? Then don't put brackets around it. It's absolutely wrong to put brackets around something and then put a one outside. Don't do it. It's actually wrong. So now look. Calcium nitrate is this formula right here. Now, okay, so let's look at a formula that looks maybe a little bit tricky. Now, you look at this formula right here and you say, oh, I got that, I got that under control. Look at it, it's all non metals. So I'm just going to name that uh, dinitrogen octahydride sulfur tetraoxide. And you just failed the course. Because look, here's the thing. That looks like it's made up of a bunch of nonmetals, but really, this ammonium is a polyatomic ion. So this is a cation and an anion coming together. This is an ionic compound. You have to put together with its charges. And by the way, you can obviously tell that if NH4 is a positive one, then this whole thing here was SO4 with a two negative charge to be able to make that formula. What's it called? Quite simply, it's ammonium 
because that's what that is. Look that up on the chart, SO4, and it with a two negative charge, and that's called sulfate. And so quite simply, it's ammonium sulfate. It's not diammonium sulfate, because that's how you name those molecular compounds, and this is ionic. Okay, so this is how you put together things with polyatomic charges. Um, now, how about another one where we would have something like, uh, I would give you iron to iodate. Now, first of all, you got to make that into a formula. So what does it say? Iron 2. So you get iron with a 2 positive charge. Iodate. Don't be putting I down because I is iodide. Now, Iodate, if it ends in 8 or ite, it's on that polyatomic chart, just look for it. And so, iodate is going to be IO3 with a negative 1 charge, that's what it says. You put those two together, and you get Fe IO3 in brackets, 2, because you need 2 iodates for every one of those right there. And that's iron 2 iodate. Now, I want to show you that there are some polyatomic ions, and you probably noticed that on the chart, uh, they're very similar to each other, they just have a slight twist in their name. For instance, ClO3 negative is called chlorate. Alright, now you may have noticed that right underneath it, on your polyatomic ion chart, there's a ClO2 with a negative 1 charge, and that's called chlorite. Hey, now you can figure it out. Same charge, but one less oxygen turns that 8 into an ite. With only, give, given only one of these names on the chart, a chlorate or a chlorite or something like that, you should be able to determine a whole host of similar type polyatomic ions that can occur for those two elements being put together. For instance, chlorate, ClO3 negative, chlorite, ClO2 negative. Now I'm going to tell you that if you have even one less oxygen than this, ClO negative, that has a name, and it's called hypoite. So you have to know that if you have a chlorite given, a ClO2 negative, one less oxygen from that is going to be called hypochlorite. Because you know, hypo means below. So we are one below the two here, so that's ClO with a negative one. Okay, so hypoite is below ite. So, see, on your chart, you can have sulfate, sulfite, then what would be, well, well if it, sulfate is SO4, 2 negative, sulfite is SO3, 2 negative, hyposulfite would be SO2 with a 2 negative charge. Make sense? Not all of those would be on a chart. You could figure it out, though, with this little scheme. What is ClO4 negative going to be? Well, that's one more than an 8, and one more than an 8 is actually called a per 8. Per? Per? Well, hypo, hyper, but wait, I'll show you why. It's not hyper. So ClO4 negative would be called one more than an 8 is a per 8, so this would be called per chlorate. And now if there was such a thing as ClO5 negative, that's where the hyper part comes in and it's a hyper 8, and that would be called hyper per, <laughs> hyper, <laughs> hyper chlorate. There we go. So, see, um, we've got that right there to be able to help us to determine some that might not be on the chart, and yet, with this little scheme, you're able to kind of figure out what to, what to do.